Hey, welcome to Kotlin Conversations, where we're having conversations with just a few of the wonderful speakers here at Kotlin Conf 2025. I'm Gwen Dwight Dow, and I have the pleasure of speaking with... I'm Thaddeus Chris. Nice to meet you. Thaddeus, thank you so much for joining us. Um, why don't you let the folks know uh, who you are and what do you do? So I'm a currently senior mobile developer at TouchLab, and I've been doing a lot of things before. I've been doing Android, iOS, some server and backend stuff. And currently I'm doing most of my things like Kotlin multi-platform, trying to break the Kotlin compiler as much as I can <laughs> and stuff around that. We appreciate your efforts. How did you get into, I guess, uh, mobile to begin with? So I think when I first got my T-Mobile G1, the mm. HTC Dream, I wanted to do something with it. And yeah. I was like flashing uh, the like custom realms and stuff. Yeah. Um, I... In, in Czech Republic, there was no way to buy apps in the in the Android market back yeah. then. So I wanted to build an app that there there was a workaround that you could apply, and it basically meant changing your locale to uh, US, and then you could buy uh, and purchase apps and games. And so that was something I wanted to build. So I started learning building for Android um, before I was doing a lot of. C sharp and PHP, so I didn't really know what to do, mm -hmm. and it was that was my beginnings with with mobile. I like and then that. I went from Android to iOS, and then back to Android. Yeah. Both Android and iOS with KMP. So KMP. Uh, the HTC Dream was that wasn't that the first Android phone in Europe? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I think it was the first Android phone. Period. Right. Like oh, was that except the, the prototypes the, the, and stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. So oh. That was was that the G one as well? Is, was that the same? Yes, name? that was the one with like the the side kick side, or the, the, the side. Yeah, yeah. The, okay. So you were definitely an OG <laughs> Android person, and definitely that feels so Androidy to me. Uh, ROMs and trying to hack Android devices yeah. to make them work back in the day, but it's a lot different environment. Like we're a lot different world now in twenty twenty five. And like as you said, you so you work for Touch Lab, which I feel like if you're in the Kotlin space, you're aware of Touch Lab and you're aware of y'all's work in you know Kotlin multi-platform. Can you talk a little bit maybe about just how you got into doing Kotlin multi-platform? Was it just because of you know your previous experience and just giving it a shot or like was it just like specifically for work? Yeah so um, I had my own company mm. and we were doing services business similar to TouchLab so we were building apps for clients and I just didn't like writing the same code twice right like having to write everything for Android and iOS and mm -hmm. since I was kind of the lead or CTO of the company. Yeah, a lot of the stuff would fall on me to do twice, and yeah. when Kotlin multi, so I like evaluated other like React Native and other things, and they never really worked the way I wanted to. And then Kotlin multi platform was like, oh, it's actually native. Yeah, and that's how I got into Kotlin multi platform, and later on found my way to TouchLab. Oh, that's what I mean. That that's the that's always been the goal, right? Right, once run everywhere, more or less, and We've been like, yeah. as long as there've been mobile, we've been like kind of circling around different solutions. And yeah, I said kind of similarly when I got started in mobile, it was like Xamarin and other things like this and nothing ever really hit. And it's like, I appreciate like the technology and the efforts, but it never really quite seemed to hit, but KMP seems a little, a little bit different. Uh, and you're speaking on KMP this year at Kotlin Conf, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Um, my talk is about dependencies and Kotlin native. So it's more geared towards like, comparison between how dependencies work for Android and JVM and how they work for the native platforms, specifically iOS and macOS. So without spoiling too much of your talk, because we want, you know, you should definitely see, um, uh, def definitely uh, stay tuned for that. But like, what are like the biggest differences between, you know, the di dependencies on, well, on basically non-JVM, what are the biggest differences in dependencies? I would say the, the biggest one is how everything is distributed and packaged on the JVM Android. You build it on your machine if, you, if you're building a library and then you deploy a build thing, basically executable thing that someone else just puts into their app and everything kind of works and is put together. Whereas on native, um, there's no one way to do things. There's multiple ways and each of them has their benefits and downsides. Uh, can you like talk a little bit about, I don't know, like you know, especially when working on maybe a Kotlin multi-platform team with like multiple, like targeting multiple platforms, like what are some of the issues do you think that people will or have run into with specific to like dependencies? Um, 
most of the issues are like how to set everything up correctly that mm. so that you don't have weird runtime issues you don't have um uh compile issues like a lot of in native there's this like linker issue right like yeah. oh my gosh. symbols are missing yeah and often people don't know what that means because sometimes they do have those symbols in there yeah. but they are still missing because the linker cannot find them and so that's one of the differences be again between the jvm and the native world how symbols and everything interacts together is it is it is it a point of i don't know it is it a point of just knowing the right tools or is it kind of when you say when you say linker i get like flashbacks to uni when i was like doing c plus plus and like i i was not make files and and SOs and all these kind of things I'm, I'm having like flashbacks um what is like i guess the best strategy if you are you know wanting to tar target like say both jvm and native or you know um ios what, what do you think are the best strategies to i don't know being like, like can you be prepared for these or is it more just starting the project and kind of working through issues as they come up uh having experience with if the native world definitely helps um for example when i started ios i basically went from android to ios mm -hmm. so i had and previously, all I ever did was manage languages, manage memory, so JVM, C Sharp, uh, PHP. Yeah. And back then, I didn't do, I wasn't on, on college or CS or anything. So we didn't do, I, I didn't have anywhere where I would do C or C++. Yeah. Um, so my, like, I really went into it cold turkey. Yeah. No knowledge about native. And it was frustrating, like, learning it slowly. And I'm trying to kind of help with that because I think starting the project can be one way, but you will probably experience weird issues that you will just need to find the documentation for. And so starting with the how everything works and then building the project, mm -hmm. when you hit those issues, which you inevitably will, you will have that like underlying knowledge to reference to to go back to and and help and figure that problem so when it when it comes to like you know something like again linker errors oh um is it just like it, are there forums or you know is it stack overflow is it reddit what are what are your what are your kind of most successful ways of like working through these issues i don't i don't think there can be an example because sometimes you uh, do find things on, as you said, Stack Overflow. Sometimes you can, uh, Reddit sometimes helps too nowadays. Um, but it, all of it is really, it depends what the issue really is. Because sometimes you're getting linker issues for things that you shouldn't be getting them. Mm -hmm. And each project is different. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes there's, there's really no one fits all solution. Mm -hmm. So even when you find something and it works, it may not be the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. So really just, understanding because the things are complex but they are straightforward in in a way mm. so once you understand how things work and understand the tools that can help you debug those issues mm -hmm. um you really don't need stack overflow that much to help you with that and instead you know yourself how to debug it sounds like just get, like for example my journey has been just figuring out gradle because i haven't i've spent like most of my life not understanding gradle but just kind of getting in there and as you said like it's straight it can be straightforward just yep. knowing just actually just getting started um but i mean y you seem to be doing a lot of good work though to help multi-platform uh developers you mentioned that you actually are writing a plugin to help ios devs yep. with in campy can you tell us a little bit about it yeah so um it's called sky s sky s k i e okay. um is the old english spelling of sky 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 um it's a plugin that improves developer experience for Android uh, iOS developers because many times we heard and myself being iOS developer the experience for the Swift developer was never great uh, with Kotlin multi-platform mm -hmm. so a lot of the teams would be like nope we will not be using this we will not be adopting it because the iOS team just doesn't like it um, and oftentimes people were like, oh, it's because it's Objective-C. But then when you really think about it, Objective-C is in most platforms, like the, the UI kit yeah. on iOS, um, yeah. foundation, all of these things are Objective-C. 
but the Swift developers don't know and don't care because it's all about the developer experience. Yeah. And so Sky brings a lot of similar things that are between the languages, so like enums, sealed classes and interfaces, um, suspended functions and flows. It brings those together so you get a better experience and it tries to stay like out of your way. Mm-hmm. So you apply it to your project and then you get to use all of the like enhanced APIs mm-hmm. without actually having to um, import a different framework, for example, and stuff. So it like enhances the framework that comes out of currently multi-platform. I like that because I think, you know, especially since KMP has gotten some legs and has been successful, I feel like that I I feel like so many times when when we're in conversations with, you know, especially Android devs that have tried to get Campy going, it almost feels like the number one, number two issue for iOS developers is that is that experience. It's just like mm-hmm. they, they have a bad experience. And of course, you know, everything like you have to compromise. And of course, you don't want to uh, sacrifice their productivity. I, I really like that a lot. It does seem like that's that you're directly addressing something that could really help with like iOS adoption. Yeah, I, uh, the one thing I would like to to point out is it's not just me. It's also uh, my colleague Philip working on it, and like this whole thing is backed by TouchLab itself. Mm-hmm. It's like it was supposed to be a month long project that we would just put together, mm-hmm. and then it was actually like basically two years of work, um, and it, it's been out there for a long time now, but still a lot of people don't know about it because it's it's a plugin that you need to apply, um, and you need to find it right. So. Okay. It, so, go put yeah. it in and it will make your iOS experience better. Okay, so can that be found on the, the IntelliJ marketplace or do you have like a website for that or um so there's a website mm-hmm. sky.touchlab.co. Okay. Um it has all the documentation how to apply it also explains the features and everything. Mm-hmm. Um I don't think we have it on the Gradle marketplace yet. Mm-hmm. It's basically all on Maven Central. Okay. All right, well, SKIE uh, is that right? Yeah. That's kie.touchlab.co. So if you are in a KMP project and you really, 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 really want to get your iOS family on board with using KMP, definitely check out this plugin. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to your talk. It sounds like, you know, as you said, a lot of this, these issues with dependency is just being able to find that knowledge and get used to it. And I'm sure that in your talk, a lot of people will be finding out, will finding, will be able to share and learn from your personal takeaways and you'll become that reference. I'll just like, instead of saying go to second overflow, I'm going to be like, look at this talk. So thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today. Thank you for having me. All right. And thank you all for joining us and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.